Welcome. If you're transitioning from PFSense to OpenSense, you will find that configuring OpenSense is easy and straightforward. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure a couple of commonly used features in OpenSense to show just how easy it is. One of the first items you'll likely wish to configure is interfaces. Go to the interfaces menu on the side menu. To assign a physical interface, click on the assignments page. You'll see a list of the currently assigned interfaces as well as any new interfaces that are yet to be assigned. In my example, I only have one physical interface left to assign, so there's only one option in the drop down box. I'm going to create a DMZ network, for example, so I'm going to enter that as a description. Click the Add button and the Save button, and you'll notice that a DMZ menu item appears on the menu for the DMZ interface. If you click that item, you'll see the configuration options for the DMZ interface. If you click Enable Interface and Prevent Interface Removal, um, the settings for this will depend on how you wish to configure your network, but for example, you can pick static IPv4 and enter an IPv4 address range as, such as 192.168.10.1 slash 24. Click Save. And then you apply your changes and then you have just configured your first interface with the DMZ. If you wish to create VLANs on top of an existing physical interface, you need to go to the Other Types menu and click on VLAN. Here we can add a new VLAN by clicking the plus button and we need to select a parent interface such as the LAN interface. And then we enter a VLAN tag of 20 and a description of guest for a guest network, for example. Click Save, and then we'll click Apply. And when you go to the back to the Assignments page, you'll see there's another interface here that we can assign that's actually a VLAN interface instead of a physical interface like these other interfaces we had assigned already. This, this, this get, uh, VLAN interface, you can click it and then enter Guest as the description for our guest network click the add button and save button and then you can configure this interface just like the parent to physical interface by by selecting enable interface prevent interface removal and selecting ipv4 and entering an address range such as 192.168.20.1 24 and click save and then we'll click apply changes and you just created a physical interface for the DMZ and a VLAN interface for a guest network. And that demonstrates how easy it is to create various interfaces in OpenSense. Firewall rules are essential for protecting access to various parts of your network. The exact configuration of each firewall rule will depend upon your security requirements. However, I will demonstrate how to create a firewall rule to show how easy it is to create a rule. Go to the firewall rules and select an interface such as the guest interface. The guest interface currently has no rules can entered for it, so it's, the default action is going to be deny all access to the network. Click on the add button and the default action is set to pass already. The interface is set to guest since we clicked on the guest network before adding a new rule. For the source, we're going to select guest net for the guest network. And for destination, we're going to select DMZ net for the DMZ network. For the description, we want to say allow access to the DMZ network. I recommend entering a description so when you refer back to this rule later, you'll know what it is intended for. Click Save and click Apply Changes. And that's all you need to do to create a basic firewall rule to allow access to other parts of your network. By default, the NAT firewall is enabled in OpenSense. If you wish to forward ports to a server in your network using NAT port forwarding, go to the Firewall NAT Port Forward page. Then click the Add button. For the interface, you'll want to select the WAN interface. In this example, I'm going to allow access to a web server that's in our DMZ network. For the protocol, you'll want to select TCP, which is already selected by default. For the destination, we want to select WAN address. 
the destination port range is HTTPS. The redirect target IP is your server's internal IP address, so it might be something such as 192.168.10.10. The redirect target port is HTTPS as well. You want to make sure for the filter rule association that you have it set to add associated filter rule or pass. The add associated filter rule will create a linked rule on the web WAN interface so that you can see which uh, ports are being opened on the WAN interface. But if you want to hide that rule and not see it on the WAN interface, you may select the pass option. Click the save button, click apply changes, and you have just created a NAT port forward rule which will allow external access through the WAN interface to your internal web server that's on your DMZ network. To allow secure access to your network, you may wish to install a VPN server on OpenSense such as WireGuard. Go to the System, Firmware, Plugins page and search for OS WireGuard. You'll notice there are two entries for WireGuard. Select the OS WireGuard Go plugin since that's the only one supported by ZenArmor at this time. Once WireGuard is installed, Click refresh in your browser so that when you go to the VPN menu, you'll see the WireGuard page. Click on the WireGuard page. You want to go to the local tab to set up a new WireGuard instance. Click the add button and enter a name such as WG server. And then for the public and private key, you can leave it blank because it will generate one once you click save. The default listen port is 51820, but you can enter a different value here. The tunnel address, you can enter whatever address you wish for your WireGuard network. Just make sure it doesn't overlap with any real networks that you have on your network already. So enter something such as 10.10.10.1 slash 24. For the peers, you'll leave this uh, as nothing since we don't have any peers selected, but we'll come back to this option in a little bit. Click the save button. When you go back to edit this, you will see the public and private key has been generated for this WireGuard instance. Click on endpoints to add a peer to your WireGuard server. These are your clients on your network that will need access to your network. Enter a, a name for your client, such as WG client. Enter the public key for the client. And then for the allowed IPs, you'll want to enter something such as 10.10.10.2 slash 32 and click save. Once you go, go back to the local tab, you can click edit and now you'll be able to select your peers that you wish to have access to your network. Click on WG client, and click save. That's an important step. Otherwise your clients will not be able to connect to your server. Once you have your server configured, click on general, click on enable WireGuard and click apply. Once you have your client configured, this is all you need to do to configure WireGuard. Now that you have your WireGuard server set up, you'll need to create an interface for the WireGuard server. Go to Interfaces, Assignments, and you'll notice a WG0 or 1 here, whatever it may show up as. And you can create a description such as WG for WireGuard and click the Add button. Click the Save button. Now that you have your WireGuard interface assigned, go to the WireGuard interface and enable that interface and click print vent interface removal, and click save. Leave everything else blank. Click apply changes. Now that you have your interface created, you can create firewall rules for this interface by going to the firewall rules and the WG interface. By default, there are no rules created, but these, this is where you'll create all the rules to allow access to various parts of your network. I won't demonstrate this in this example, but you'll just need to enter rules just like any other interface. After you create the rules to allow access to your internal network, you'll need to go to the WAN and create a firewall rule for allowing access to WireGuard from outside of your network. So you'll want to click that it, the action is pass, interface is WAN. You'll want to select protocol UDP and the destination is WAN address. And the destination port is going to be other and it's going to be 51820 for both uh, from and to. And then we can enter a description such as allow access to WireGuard and click save. Click apply changes. And this is all you should need to be able to access 
your WireGuard server from outside of your network. Once you have your client configured, you should be able to connect the WireGuard securely to your network. If you are a PFSense user, you may be using the PFBlocker NG plugin or ZenArmor, which was installed via the command line. While the PFBlocker NG plugin does not exist in OpenSense, much of the functionality can be duplicated in other areas in OpenSense. ZenArmor adds next generation firewall capabilities to your firewall so it may be used in place of or alongside traditional block lists. In OpenSense, the installation process for ZenArmor can be done in the web interface unlike PFSense. Go to the System, Firmware, Plugins page. When the Plugins page opens, you can search for OS Sunny Valley to install the third party repository for ZenArmor. Once the repository has been installed, click on the Plugins tab and search for OS Sensei. Sensei was the old name for ZenArmor, so you'll want to select this first entry for OS Sensei and click the Install button. Once the plugin has been installed, you want to refresh your browser window so that the ZenArmor menu shows up in the side menu bar on the left. Click on any page of ZenArmor to show the configuration wizard page. Once you have read the terms of service and privacy policy, click the checkbox and click proceed. Your hardware is now being checked to see if it's compatible with ZenArmor. Once it shows that your hardware is compatible, click next. Next, you'll need to select the database you wish to use for reporting. By default, the, a local Elasticsearch database is selected. Elasticsearch is best for large data sets. If you're limited on resources on your firewall, you can select MongoDB or a remote Elasticsearch database or even a local SQLite database. Click Install Database and proceed. It will take a few minutes to install the Elasticsearch database. Once Elasticsearch has been installed, click Next. Now you need to select the native NetMap driver or the emulated NetMap driver. If your hardware is compatible with a native NetMap driver, you should use that for best performance. Otherwise, you'll need to select the emulated NetMap driver. You'll need to select your, the interfaces you wish to protect with ZenArmor. So I'm going to choose DMZ for this example as the protected interface. Click Next. Next, you'll see your cloud reputation and web categorization servers. This is where ZenArmor gets all of its information for categorizing apps and um, reputation for websites. You'll see that have US East and US Central selected by default. It will choose the fastest servers by default. Click Next. Next, you need to choose your deployment size. I'm just going to use medium 100. Um, the default is for this example, but you can choose a larger size depending on how many um, concurrent users you expect to have in your network. Click the Next button. Now you need to activate your subscription if you have one. If you want the free version, you can click the bottom option, but I'm going to show what happens if you enter a subscription key. And if you're migrating from PFSense, you're going to see a box such as this, which will say reactivate subscription for this device. So you want to click that so that it will activate your subscription on your current device that you're migrating to. Once the license loads uh, successfully, you click the next button and then the finish button. Click the refresh button and you'll be taken to the status page by default, which you'll see some messages at the top of us uh, from ZenArmor, as well as the status of your uh, reputation servers as well as your network interface throughput and if the services of ZenArmor and Elasticsearch are running. You can select if you want these services to start on boot and most of the time you're going to want that so that you're always protected by ZenArmor. Once you have ZenArmor installed, you, you may proceed to the policies page and configure any policies that you wish for your network. And, and that's all you need to do to install ZenArmor on OpenSense and migrate your PFSense ZenArmor configuration over to OpenSense.